Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are gonna be testing some intake manifolds on my Stroker LS3. The Fast LSXR. The Brian Tooley Racing Trinity V2 intake. The Performance Design Carbon PTR. This is the final video in this engine's series. Again, this is the engine I used to race at the Texas Mile. We did a full build series on this motor. So if you're new to the channel, go back a couple videos, watch this blueprint and CNC and build a monster of an LS3 combo. Now it's time to test manifolds. In all of the previous testing, we already have a ton of data with the Holly High Ram. So I'm gonna save some time and not keep testing it with that intake since we know exactly what it does. But today we are going to start with the Fast LSXR intake manifold. Then we are going to test the Brian Tooley Racing Trinity V2 intake. And finally, the Mac Daddy of them all, the Performance Design Carbon PTR. Now, full disclosure, all of these manifolds are in their stock original configuration and orientation as they come from the manufacturer. The Fast manifold has the long runners, the PTR manifold has the long runners and the high ram and the BTR are unported out of the box. Carbon PTR and the fast LSXR both offer mid and short length runners. We're not testing those today. We're just doing out of the box. If you bought it yourself, bolted it on your motor and see what they do. So the way we're gonna kind of film this video is we're gonna put a GoPro in the diner room. We're gonna just time-lapse us swapping manifolds around. We'll show you guys making pools with each manifold. And then at the end of the video, I'll sit down with you on the computer and we'll go over the results, the data, and we'll talk about it. We'll see which intake manifold is best for your application and what you wanna achieve with your engine. With each intake manifold, we'll make a minimum of three pools so we can get the fuel trims dialed in and the spark trims dialed in and the Dyna results that you guys will see will be the best of all of those test hits. So with all that out of the way, let's get to work.
So in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that the carbon PTR intake had a variable runner system. Well, we actually happen to have all the different runners in stock at the moment in our shop. Unfortunately for fast, I don't have yours available, so we're not gonna be able to show the fast manifolds flexibility. But with the carbon intake, I'm curious, how can we change these runner lengths and how it's gonna affect the torque curve? So. Logan busted off the top of the manifold, the lid, and now you can see those runners inside, or trumpets. These are the standard long runners, and we're looking at total height. They also have a mid runner and then a super short runner. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out the long runners from the manifold. We're gonna pop in the mids. We're gonna make some more hits on it, and then we'll pull the mids out, pop in the shorties, and finish our testing. And then I can show you guys the results of this test. Okay, we have finished dynoing all of these intake manifolds. I wish we had the different runners available for the fast intake. We'll do that test at another time, don't worry, but it's not gonna make it into this series. So I have the data pulled up here on my computer. Let's go over the results. All right, well, some really interesting things. Of course, we started, um, not this test, but previously in the other videos that we've been making with this engine, the high ram is what I used for all of the testing and running. Okay, so here's the high ram curve. 710 horse, 568 peak torque, and we have an average horsepower of 596 and an average torque of 540. The highest of all of the, we'll call them big manifolds, the high ram, the PTR, and the BTR. The fast is a big outlier. Let's go ahead and pull him up next. So here's the fast manifold overlaid with the high ram. High ram in red, fast in blue. Because that fast manifold has such a longer runner, it's able to create a much faster airspeed and air velocity quicker, and it doesn't have to rely on the engine speeding up to get that velocity going. And because of that, you can see how much faster the torque can come in down low instead of having to wait for the engine to start RPMing to create that air velocity. So we pulled the fast from 3,500 to 7,000, so a full um, 500 RPM shift compared to the big high ram from 4,000 to 7,500. The fast manifold ended up having a peak horsepower of 668, but it had the highest peak torque of 600 foot-pounds. So if this was a heavy vehicle, something that the customer wanted all that torque nice down and low, and the fast might be your guy. The high ram really only beat it from 6,500 RPM up. That last 1,000 RPM, it was able just to really keep screaming. Whereas below that, if this motor, if you only wanted to run it to seven grand or just a nice street car, that fast manifold is a really strong contender. Uh, now let's take off the high ram and let's throw up the Brian Tooley Trinity. Since that one and the fast sort of compete against each other, they both fit in Corvettes and Camaros you don't have to cut your hood, it's a bolt-in install. So here we have the Brian Tooley in blue compared to the fast in red. The Brian Tooley intake had a peak horsepower of 687 and a peak torque of 552. And I don't quite know who it's for because yeah, it did make more horsepower in the last thousand RPM um, but it's not like it made much more. And actually the fast, I mean down here in the meat of the torque curve, the fast manifold is making almost 100 more foot-pounds of torque, and then even on the big end, it only actually lost about 20 horsepower. So 100 foot-pounds of torque for 20 horsepower, 
you'll have to really think about what your goals are with your car and what manifold is right for you. Now, again, we don't have the short runners for the fast. I, you know, I bet if we put those in, we could have picked up some more power up here, sacrificing a little bit of that killer torque down low. Um, but it just depends what your application looks like. Do you want that big high end power or do you want that meaty torque down low? So let me take off the fast and we'll do the brine toolie and the high ram. And you can see that high ram just kicks its butt everywhere, but it's taller. So again, it's kind of a trade off. Um, the high ram and the carbon are really the competitors. So let's take off the high ram and let's go through the carbon. So let's first start with the carbon with a long runner. 686 horse, 580 peak torque. Let's overlay that with the high ram. And here's where it gets interesting. The high ram and the carbon are fighting each other the whole way up. And then just after 7,000, 6,900 and 7,000, that's where the high ram starts to take over and wins. If you were gonna just have a motor that turned 7,000 RPM, the carbon might be your guy. It edged out the high ram a little bit in torque right around the 6,000 to 6,500 range. But again, above 7,000, that high ram started to pull away. So, well, the carbon has different runners. So let's take off the high ram and let's throw up the carbon with the mid runner. Now I think the mid and the long runner are splitting hairs. If this was a street car or anyone's car, I'd say forget about the mids, just run the longs. Yeah, the mid lost power pretty much everywhere and only gained it above 6,700 RPM, but where it gained, it only picked up about five horsepower. I don't think that's totally worth it at that super high RPM. I'd rather have the longer runner and have the, all the more power down here. But again, it's only five horsepower pretty much across the whole board. So I don't think you're ever gonna notice that in a car. So let's take off the mids and let's put the shorts up. Now we can see some, some stuff here. So the mid runner or the short runner, sorry, is this blue curve and the long runner is that red curve. And what's interesting is if we calculate the average horsepower and torque between the two, the long runner only beats it by three numbers across the board. And I think it's just because it's beating it all through here. And then that short runner takes off and helps it keep climbing from, looks like right here, 6,600 RPM up to 7,500. So the short runner, let's compare now against the high ram. And again, the high ram just kind of beats it everywhere. It has more torque down low. It holds on to the power up top. It's kind of the end all be all on this engine application. Here I've got the high ram overlaid with all three carbon pools. Um, the high ram is in red. All the other carbons are on the other colors. You can see the green is that short and the high ram beats it up top. But again, we have that long runner beating it right here in the torque range but they all kind of split hairs. I mean, even in our biggest difference across the whole curve is only 20 numbers. So again, are you gonna notice that in the car? Probably never, but if you're racing, it might be worth something to you. Now let's throw up the fast on there, which is obviously king of the street. The torque down low is just insane. And then the Brian Tooley, I don't really know who it's for. Maybe for power adder guys who don't wanna worry about breaking a plastic manifold and they just want a solid cast aluminum one, but Man, it's down on torque everywhere in this whole test. So not to be hard on Brian Tooley, but I think it's kind of an impossible design that's never really gonna work on a naturally aspirated combo, except for maybe that last little bit of power over the fast at the very top. Again, if we go back to the fast versus that Brian Tooley, if that's what you're after, then I guess, you know, Brian Tooley is your guy. Just be aware of how much torque and power you're down below 5,000, below 6,000 RPM. So if you live from 6,500 to 8,000, then it's your guy. It's gonna beat that fast every single time. But if it's a street car that's gonna live and mostly make pulls from three to 6,500, that fast is gonna hit way harder. So again, let me throw up the high ram. And I know it starts to get crowded on the screen, but uh, just doing the best we can here. And then that carbon with the short manifold, short runner. So yeah, high ram's your dude. If it's a race car, put the high ram on it. If you don't care about cutting your hood, if it's a race car and you don't want to cut your hood, BTR Trinity. If it's a race, if it's a street car and you just want something sick that'll do third gear burnouts at low RPM, fast as your man. And then if you want the bling, go for the carbon. So really quick before we go, here's the carbon PTR with the long runner in red. The baby blue is the short runner and the medium blue is the high ram. And so we can see that carbon with the long runner act. If you're only gonna turn 7,000, that's your guy. 
but after that the high ram just starts to keep on pulling. So, all right guys, we are finally done with this 6.0 engine build series. It's been fully built. We've tested push rods. We've tested intake manifolds. The motor is now going to go to a new home into a uh, bright red C6 Corvette in the DFW area here in Texas. And I think the next series we're gonna start is going back to my car, the black C6 Z06 I just picked up. We've already got the heads off of it. And they're already getting CNC'd. I've already got, as you know, a huge camshaft waiting to go into the block. So thank you so much for watching this video series. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and we will see you next time.